Hello and welcome to another edition of Bronx Magazine, where we spotlight the people, places, and the events that make the beautiful Bronx the truly unique place that it is. I'm Derek Woods, outside of Bay Plaza here in Co-op City. Before it was built in the early 1990s, it lay on a rubble-strewn, weed-infested lot. But so many Bronxites remember it as so much more. Once upon a time, it was a magical, magical place called Freedom Land. Now this may be Indian territory, and it may look like the Old West, but the time is today, and the place is Freedom Land, a big entertainment park in the Bronx, in the state of New York, just half an hour by subway from Times Square in New York City. It was only in existence for four years, but its memory truly lives on today. A recent discussion on the amusement park was held at the Pelham Bay Mansion Museum, led by Thomas X. Casey, the author of Bronx Views and a Freedom Land expert, the discussion drew over 150 attendees, proving that indeed, Freedom Land can still draw a crowd. Well, I grew up in Co-op City, and I went to Bronx Science, and I remember telling my volleyball coach that I lived in Co-op City, and she said, Freedom Land? That's where Freedom Land is. So when I heard that Tom Casey, that we could actually get Tom Casey to come and talk to us about it, I thought, absolutely, absolutely we should have him come. And I didn't realize what a following he has and that we would have so many people here today. We were bursting at the seams. Well, the first thing I tell, tell them that is Freedom Land was one of the greatest amusement parks that ever existed. And the most important thing about it was it was in the Bronx, right in Bronx, New York City. It was generally where the shopping area is at Bart where Bartow Avenue exit on the New England Thruway exists but today. And a, a bit of the east coast of Freedom Land was where some of the other buildings, Ash Loop, uh, which exists today, some, some of the buildings are right there. That's one of the number one questions. And I guess number two, surprisingly, is everybody's always asking what were the lines to Freedom Land. They remember the commercial, Mommy and Daddy Take My Hand, Take Me Out to Freedom Land, but they just can't remember the second and third line, which is 50 cents is all you'll pay at Freedom Land today. People always forget how inexpensive Freedom Land was for a child to get in, 50 cents. Groundbreaking ceremonies were held in 1959, and less than a year later, Freedom Land opened its doors to record crowds and hype. Over 60,000 people, more than twice the number anticipated, came to Freedom Land on opening day, with jammed in customers and long lines forcing the park to stop selling tickets and even close I-95. It was an omen of bad things to come. Covering 85 of a 205-acre lot, at the time it was indeed the world's largest entertainment center, larger than its West Coast rival, a little place called Disneyland. In fact, one of the planners, C.V. Wood, a Texas designer, had previously worked in the planning, construction, and management of Disneyland. Well, first of all, it was an extravagant amusement park that would cost $65 million. And the entrepreneurs of Freedom Land, it's Ted Rayner, William Zeckendorf, and others, they decided to put in, they spared no expense, and they uh, recreated an amusement park with entertainment and history. This was quite different from most amusement parks around the country. The park had a variety of themed areas, each representing a location and era of U.S. history, including Little Old New York, Chicago, the Great Plains, San Francisco, Southwest, New Orleans, and Satellite City. Feature attractions might seem tame by today's standards, but were crowd pleasers back in the day. Hey, what's happening over there in Chicago? Fire, look at that. It's the Chicago Fire of 1871. Hurry up, men. We're going to need volunteers for this one. Everybody man the pump. We've got to get water on the fire or the whole city will go. Faster, men. Keep that pump going. Mrs. O'Leary's cow has kicked over a lantern, and the flames are spreading fast. Well, one of the first things that uh, you come across when you get to Freedom Land of Heart, you see up, you look up in the sky, and you see these small, what were called ore buckets, go into the Tucson mine. They went from the northeast of the United States, Chicago specifically, down to the southwest. They were a 60-foot high cable cars that allowed people to get on the cars out in the open and crisscross the United States. Now what was very unique about it is that this did not exist anywhere. Now we had the parachute jump in Coney Island, but you went up and came right down. This one, you went across the United States. 
It was about a 10 minute trip and you got a tremendous view of the entire Bronx and the entire amusement park. Here's Paul Anka. Tell us, Paul, what Freedom Land's got. Hey, I can't tell you that in a minute, but come on, Paul, let's go, go, go. Come on out to Freedom Land for the greatest time you've ever planned. Fun and thrills go hand in hand at exciting Freedom Land. There was also a big entertainment venue called the Moon Bowl which attracted some of the top talent of the day, including Chubby Checker, Betty Goodman, Pat Boone, and Xavier Kuga, to name a few. Bobby Darren performed here in 63 in a downpour and collapsed afterwards. Other big names include Lionel Hampton, Count Basie, and even a young Marvin Gaye. Well, what's important about Freedom Land, it was very, very local, and it was larger than Disneyland. And people had an opportunity to, to either take a bus or a train right in their own backyards and go to Freedom Land. And quite a few people took advantage of that and, and many, actually I found out, many couples met their spouses or, or future girlfriends or boyfriends right at Freedom Land. But Freedom Land could never really live up to its promise. It started under a black cloud when six unfinished buildings were demolished by fire and had to be raised before opening day. A stagecoach overturned and injured ten people just six days after it opened. Two months later, the front office was robbed of $28,000 by four armed men who made their getaway in a boat, and it went downhill from there. By 1964, they had tried everything to stem the decline in mounting debt, but the opening of the World's Fair in Queens was among the many final nails in Freedom Land's coffin. Two, two big points are the World's Fair. The World's Fair opened in April 1964. Freedom Land was already on a tremendous decline by that point in attendance, and the entrepreneurs were trying to salvage Freedom Land with more amusement rides. Another theory is a conspiracy theory that William Zeckendorf, who owned the land which Freedom Land was built on, had to wait only five years until he could build Co-op City. Meaning, if the buildings that were at Freedom Land lasted five years without sinking into the ground, because Freedom Land, that ground, the 85 acres, was on some soft ground, if the buildings could last five years, then the city would allow William Zeckendorf to build high-rises, Co-op City. I don't think that's really true as the reason why Freedom Land closed in five years. The reason was financial. Uh, Freedom Land was undercapitalized. It was a $65 million project, which was mostly financed by bank loans. This was a tremendous debt for Freedom Land to carry, and that just doesn't even cover the operating expenses for salary and insurance. From my opinion, as, as time went on, less people started going to Freedom Land. I think it was because of the car. Uh, most young adults who had children, such as I was a 10-year-old at the time, my parents finally bought a car in 1961, a 59 Rambler, and started going many different places uh, over the weekends, which cut down, I'm sure, on Freedom, Freedom Land's attendance. As a matter of fact, Freedom Land's attendance dropped off on weekends all th through their history, and it was much more populated during the week. On September 14, 1964, citing competition from the World's Fair, Zeckendorf and Partners filed for bankruptcy and Freedom Land was torn down later that year. It had lasted just five seasons. But even today, Freedom Land lives on in a variety of places. Many of the rides are still in operation in small amusement parks upstate and across the country, including the legendary Tornado and Danny the Dragon. Bronx author Richard Price's best-selling novel bears the name of the park, although used in a fictional location. Freedom Land memorabilia trades well on eBay and a variety of sites, including a virtual Freedom Land where Rob Friedman gives visitors a virtual tour of the park. In fact, footage of Freedom Land sells regularly at the popular expatriate site backinthebronx.com. It sells very well. i startled how many people love the Freedom Land and want to see moving pictures of the actual thing. And they're hoping to see maybe themselves there because, uh, you know, it's quite possible they could have been in uh, some of those shots. And uh, it's experiencing, it's almost like being back in the Bronx in the 50s and 60s. As you see the movement, you feel you're in there and you can kind of remember it. But truly the memory of Freedom Land burns the brightest in the hearts of the children who walk the lanes of the Bronx's own magic kingdom. Great way to remember the Bronx in the days when those of us that are over 40, as he would say, remember the good old days. And uh, it was a great place. I went there as a kid myself a few times. Um, I was kind of young, so I don't remember everything, but uh, 
It was really, it was a super place, and I'm glad that he's bringing this history to life. I guess because it doesn't exist anymore, number one. Number two, that it was right here in the Bronx, especially. It was a little difficult to get to if you, if, unless you had a car. Well, you know, I think as a um, Bronxite New Yorker, we are uh, historically a people who enjoy nostalgia. And just going back to the good old days helped me. So I, I told everyone that I knew to come because I knew you they would enjoy it. I mean, it's obviously, that was just so heart-wrenching for me to just go look at those pictures. You know, I remember that. Now it's time we got back on solid ground again, back to the Bronx in the state of New York. So long.